Welcome, welcome, welcome to Basketball Heads Live. Season 2. Told you we back. That's right. Tonight's guest. Very special. This basketball head is a New York City great. Hailing straight from the Bronx, New York. He attended the Wake Clinton High School, but did not play on the ball team. He made his names on the playground in New York City to earn a scholarship to the College of Southern Idaho. Then he became a legend at UNLV under legendary coach Jerry Tarkanian. This basketball head scored 855 points in 54 games. That's two years of putting in work. The Rebels went 20 and 6 in his first season and 24 and 5 with an NCAA tournament berth in his second. He was also the first UNLV player picked in the first round of the NBA draft and the school's first All American in the school's history. Go figure. Straight from the Bronx, New York. Without playing high school basketball, he becomes a legend at UNLV. Then get drafted and become an NBA veteran. That's right. Who could forget this basketball head going head to head with Larry Bird, the legend, in the 1975 NBA final, scoring 25 points, dishing out six assists against the legend in the Boston Garden. Go figure. New York City, stand up. And show your respect for UNLV great and NBA veteran, Ricky Sobers. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? ready? Yes. 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 You have you just stepped out into, into, into the world, world of chaos. chaos. Where everybody, Where everybody goes, goes hard. hard. Tickets because the game about to start. Hey, what's happening? What's happening, brother? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm I'm actually blessed, man, to be on live basketball heads live with you. You know, New York City great. Someone has put down a lot of work throughout the years. Someone when I was younger watching TV and loved to hearing your name. And them say New York City zone, Ricky Sobers. Man, that brought so much pride to us young guys, man. So I want to say salute to you, OG. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. You know, That's I did right. it all for the city. That's right. That's right. So, what I like to ask everyone who come on the show is first of all, let me introduce you to my partner in crime, our artist on the set, Jamel Powell. Mel, what's going on, baby? It's Who's all good. Yeah. So, I like to ask everyone who come on the show, who introduced you to the game, Rick? Well, uh, that's that's a great story to tell. Let me hold this camera straight. Um, pretty much, I learned the game from, uh, initially, my first coach was a gentleman by the name of Gardner Page. We called him mm. Mr. Page. Mr. Page uh, was a coach, was a youth basketball, bitty basketball coach for a organization by the name of Minisync, which was located in Harlem. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's ironic that, uh, that, that Rod Strickland and I have that connection in that I was coached, you know, initially by, I, I came to Mr. Page first and then, Rod came to Mr. Page after me, some years after. And uh, ironically enough, uh, Mr. Page was such a great coach. He, he was able to develop at least two pros that I know of. Hey, man. Can't ask for no more better than you and Rod, man. Y'all representing New York City well. 
Well, thank you very much, man. We appreciate that. Definitely. So was was you a, a, a quick learner or did it take you a while to kind of catch on? Well, I fell in love with the game, you know, at 11 to 12, man. So, you know, it, you know that, that, that the basketball bug bit me hard. And uh, the fact that I had such a, such a great mentor and a great coach in Mr. Page, you know, he, he taught me all the skills that I needed to know. Um, uh, he, he was phenomenal. Uh, I, I, I couldn't, I could not walk and chew bubble gum at the same time at 11, 12 years old. So, you know, uh, there, there was no, you know, <laughs> I, I was not born to play this game. You know, it was hard work and a lot of dedication and, and a lot of good luck, you know, to be able to get from from there, bitty basketball, not knowing how to shoot the ball, not knowing how to dribble the ball. We all have to start somewhere. And to be able to uh, continue to grow and, and get to a point where you become a pro. And, and it was your love for the game that kept you going back to wanting to get better. So a, a, a great coach will bring that out of you. You know, so salute to your coach, man, who did that for your raw, man. That's very yeah. special. That's very special. Yeah, Mr. So when Page. You were, Go ahead. Yes, Mr. Page, Coach Page, yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, who was the best player in your neighborhood when you was coming up? Best player in my neighborhood. Wow. Interesting, interesting question. Um let's see. Well, generally speaking. Probably a, a, a guy by the name of Lenny Mo Wilkins. And, <laughs> That's and, right. And, and uh, you know, Lenny was a couple of years older than me. And, uh, you know, when That's I... That's not the same Lenny Wilkins from Brooklyn. No, actually, he was from he, he was from the South Bronx. Lenny Wilkins that played for Boys and Girls I'm talking about. No, no, no. Uh, th there's another Lenny Wilkins. That that yeah, is. I want to clarify that for for audience because we want to give a spotlight to those neighborhood guys, to the guys who probably didn't make it off the neighborhood, but were the best players in the neighborhood who never really got any shots. So this is good. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah. I would I would probably say Lenny Wilkins was, if not the best, he was one of the best in the area. And uh, you know, he and I went to high school together. My first high school was Morris High School. And I uh, eventually wound up transferring out to uh, to DeWitt Clinton. Now this is this is very interesting because I'm speaking to Coach Ray Haskins today, the legendary coach. Yes. And uh, I put up of uh, the first post I put up for you a couple of weeks back. It said DeWitt Clinton High School great, and Coach, who is the godfather of the show, he called me said Glenn. Ricky didn't play for Dewey Clinton. I said, Coach, I did the research, and that's what it led me to. He said, Glenn, he went to Dewey Clinton, but asked him, did he play? So here's the question. <laughs> no, did you play? I, I, I did not play. Um, what, what basically happened is, as I mentioned, I was at Morris High School. I was the first freshman to make uh, Morris, Morris High School's team. Uh, had a nutty coach there. He wound up kicking me off the team for a rule that I had no idea about, never told me about or anything. I was wearing my hat in school. He walked by me in the hallway one day and said, hey, you're off the team. I said, man, what kind of world is this, man? This is crazy. So you had a hat on? I had a hat on, okay? Nobody told me about the rule, not the coach, not any of the players on the team, nobody that knew anything, nobody, well, at least I didn't know about it, and nobody alerted me to the rule. But that's what happened. I got put off the team. I don't know what the guy's problem was, but God rest his soul, I'm, I'm glad he's not coaching any longer, okay? <laughs> but, but, um, but what happened was I, I, wound up, uh, I wound up, you know, being off the team that year. So, you know, the ironic thing about New York is you, you, can, you can have a situation like that, but ball on, on the outside is every bit as competitive and, 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 and you know, but, well, competitive is the word, you know, because you have you, there are no restrictions. You can play against anybody that you want to play against. So what happened was 
Um, you know, my, my great mentor, Tiny Archibald, and many of his friends, they took me under their wing, and they beat me up real good. Okay, they took me out there and they, you know, they made me cry. As soon as I cried, they said, shut up, don't cry, because, you know, that ain't going to get you nowhere. Okay, so you, right. to play. you came out here to play with us, even though, you know, you're 15 and I'm 28. Okay, that's not a problem. Okay, so, you know, you have to get over this. So, uh, so pretty much what happened was, uh, you know, my, my, fr my freshman year was gone. Wound up coming back my sophomore year. Uh, tried out for the team again, wound up making the team. Nutty coach started cutting players that were all the great players on the team. We was going to have a decent team, and he, he wound up cutting our center. And um, so when I saw that, I said, I got to get out of here. This guy's crazy, okay? He's cutting our best players, and, you know, this, this is not the place for me. So as I was looking around for places to transfer to, you know, many of my friends were going to Taft High School, okay? And Taft was, was in my zone, and I really wanted to go to Taft, but for some reason, I couldn't get there, okay? I didn't understand the zoning rules and all of that stuff, you know? But so what happened was there was no zoning for Clinton. Obviously, mm -hmm. Clinton had, uh, had, had a great reputation with, you know, many of the star players that, you know, we all know and love over the years. So I wound up transferring there. Had no idea about the transfer rule, okay? I thought I could, could just, you know, transfer and walk in and play, okay? That didn't happen. I had to sit out six to seven months, which was essentially the season. If I decided to play, I would have played like three games, okay? Now, I was having fun playing, you know, playing against the, you know, the brothers, man, that were beating me up that was older than me, and, and I was getting good tutelage. So the way I looked at it is, eh, all right, it's only there's, there's three games. Okay, it's my junior year. Well, I'll come back my senior year. Okay. Well, what happened with my senior year is I got a little lax. Okay. Got lax academically and was ineligible. Okay. And and ironically enough, that that caused me a lot of grief, a lot of embarrassment. And, but uh, ironically, Clinton wound up winning the championship against Boys High without me. And, yeah. and it really allowed for a real good friend of mine and uh, to become a star player at, at Clinton. And that was Steve the Bear Shepherd. Yes, I think he mentioned him and uh, Coach said, if you guys would have played together, you guys would be everybody in the country. We might have been because we were, we were we were we were similar in that we were both very physical players. And as you know, you know most most New Yorkers, we, you know the way we play is is uh, is is we play. If, if you're if even if you're six three, you, you're thinking like you're six eight, right, and you're playing right, right. a power forward or the center. So so we both you know played. Uh, underneath the basket, we didn't mind banging a little bit, and and uh, and and we both were very aggressive players. So I think uh, I don't. Who knows what would have happened? You know, we <laughs> life is strange. We might have That's lost. Right. But I think we, you know, if, if we we might we would have gave him a real good run for the money. And I think what happened, everything that happened, happened for a reason. Happened for a reason. And the way Clint was all boys, right? Clinton was an all boys school, seven thousand students. They had three. This is why y'all won the most championships. Dimmer boys high, all boys. I know. So you I already know. stacked. You stacked already, and I there was know. no zoning issues. I don't think for boys high or Clinton, so everybody could have went there. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But it was it was, it was tough. <laughs> Tough environment, tough school, no doubt about it, you know. And and we we used to, you know, many of my friends, you know, the gentleman, uh, I, you know, I, I rattle off a name. Uh, uh, Jackie Knowles is 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 a, is a is a cat from the South Bronx, and he wound up going to junior college like I did, and uh, we actually wound up playing against each other in the in the national uh, junior college tournament, but Jackie was part of a team that we, we called the Lunch Squad. 
okay? All the guys that were ineligible. And the, the going story is, had we had an opportunity to play against the, the, the uh, team from Clinton, uh, that we probably would have beat them pretty handily because the guys that were eligible of guys like right. myself, Jackie Knoll, uh, Tom Lockhart, and, and I can't remember. There, there are others, man, that were also notables, but, uh, but we, we, had, we had a squad, bro. We had a squad. I had AJ West, another uh Dwayne Clinton uh player. Um he actually is one of my school's bus drivers and we was having a conversation and I told him I had a basketball show. I told him it was New York City based. He's like, you know, Glenn, I played high school ball too. And I was like, Really? It's like, yes, Dwayne Clinton. So I did the research and the 1966-67 team. He's right up to the front holding the ball with the coach. <laughs> Amazing, right? So I said, right. did you play with Tiny? He said, yes, but Tiny wasn't eligible to his senior year. That's right. Who That's right. did? I don't think anyone really knows that Tiny Archibald only played one year high school basketball. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, there were, you know, listen, there was so much going on, you know, that, that, you know, a lot of stuff that we, we just didn't know. The systemic racism that was going on was just terrible. And, uh, you know, all the drugs in the communities and it still plagues our communities. But, you know, at that time, it was something that was plaguing, you know, heroin was, a, was, was a horrible thing that was, was going, uh, going through the communities. And, and, uh, many of my friends got caught up in it. Um, you know, I wanted a better way out, you know, and, and uh, chose not to. But uh, but in any event, um, a lot of players got caught up either academically, get, you got caught up in the pit, what I call the pitfalls of the game. Either it's academics, uh, uh, drugs, okay, uh, just hanging with the wrong crowd, okay, uh, you know, being undisciplined. Or just being ignorant, you know, you know, thing, you know, being ignorant about the thing. That's stupid because the difference between stupidity and ignorance, okay, uh, and and being ignorant, you just don't know. Stupidity, That's you right. just don't want to know. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Wow. So, what was the tournaments back then that you played in that kind of exposed you to other colleges who wanted you on a team? Well, what really happened was was this. Okay, I I I guess as a as a as a fifteen year old, I started to come alive. Okay, and um, you know you know started to. But I start what 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 really developed me is I started going out to Brooklyn. That's where Ray Haskins and I. Ah, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Say that again. Let's say that again now, because I, I need people to understand. <laughs> Everybody, everybody. Oh, knows. I'm gonna make some noise for that. Every everybody knows. Everybody knows. Brooklyn, Brooklyn represents basketball better than most places in the world. And so many, so many great players, you know, that I came in contact with. So when I started going out to Brooklyn and started playing in those tournaments, playing against guys like Lloyd, the World Be Free, Phil Sellers, Ooh. Ernie Du Douse, Henry Kinsey, Gus Washington, uh, and Ray Haskins, uh, Jocko, Okay. Yes. Rest in uh, peace, Doc. Yes. Fly Williams. Oh man. Okay. Pete Davis. I mean, when I started playing, you know, when I started playing out there, that's what, what tournament? What tournament were you playing in the Brooklyn? You, you got me right now. This is this is good. Played it. Played it. Uh, played soul in the hole. Soul in the hole. Soul in the hole. You Woo. know. Played uh, played at, at St. John's the Baptist. Mm. Um, you know, it's all a blur right now, man. But you know, um, so I knew you had to go to St. John's Rec, BRC, all of those. Yeah. Oh yes, 
Oh yes. And played for for a a neighborhood Brooklyn coach man by the name of we call him the rapper. I don't know what his what his real name was, but <laughs> rapper, the rapper, rap, the rapper. Ah, the rap. who's that? I know, I know the legendary coaches who I know were Gil Reynolds. Okay. I know. Um, okay. Well, Gil, yeah. Gil Reynolds, Gil Reynolds had he had Pete Davis. Yeah. And he had. And he had Phil Sellers. He also had, I believe he had World Be Free also. And he had Albert King. He had Bernard King. Yes. 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 And, wow. And yeah. So, so, yeah, actually, yeah, Gil was very well known. And, and, and Rapper was, was a great, was one of the great recruiters of, of, of New York City. And particularly Brooklyn, of course. So he saw me play. At the Marshall Montefiore tournament, which was mm. predominantly a high school all-star game that most of the great great high school players in New York would play. Either you would play with your high school team, but I guess you couldn't be coached by your high school coach. So somebody else coached, or you know, coaches would put together a an all-star team and we would we would wind up playing together so anyway that's that's kind of what happened rap had an all-star team that had i believe he had uh mel davis's uh younger brother i think so sylvester played and uh there were some other cats that played man very obviously very good players okay and so rap rap saw me play out there after one of the games he snatched me up he said hey I want you to play in, in St. John's tournament and come play in Brooklyn, man. So, you know, at that point in time, a lot of guys, you know, in, in the South Bronx and, and, and the different boroughs, unless you were at a neighboring borough like Queens, you didn't play in Brooklyn, okay? You, you know, you Listen, a, lot of Queens, a lot of Queens guys didn't come out here either. So I'm glad yeah. you said this, OG, because we go at an all-time mile, guys from Harlem and the Bronx, and I would say – when we was playing, a lot of y'all guys didn't come down here, but we made sure we went up top. We had yeah. to. Cause we wanted to play against everybody. Absolutely. Well, if it was any kind of competitor, you want to, you know, you want you always want to play against the best, no matter right. who they may be, you know, you may get toasted, but that's okay. What goes around comes around. So right. you, know, you want to you want to see how you measure up. And that's what happened with me. And uh, oh, one of the other tournaments that I played in, since you mentioned tournaments, was a tournament called the Lower East Side. Okay, it was an outdoor tournament. It was a summer tournament, and that's another. I think that's the first time that I saw Lloyd Lloyd Free and played against him, and I was just blown away, man. I mean, golly, the guy had like a body that was crazy. I mean, yeah, I mean, if you saw the guy play, man, I mean, it was just like, mm -hmm. oh, God, man. And then you saw him jump, and then you looked at his thighs, and you say, yeah, I, I see why he was jumping so high, man. His thighs look like the Hulk. Oh, yeah, definitely. Got a part in that jump shot. Incredible player, man. Incredible player. Um, uh, no doubt, world be free. Uh, Ernie Dudouse, um, uh Phil Sellers, Pete Davis. And um, who's the other brother, man? Uh, oh, man. I, I think I mentioned them all. But those cats there particularly were incredible players, so much better than me. But when I got an opportunity to play out there, it was, it was very interesting because I remember distinctly it was a kind of a coming-of-age experience for me. I played uh, on a team. It was myself. Oh, I forgot to mention Larry Fogel, okay? Larry Fogel, myself, World Be Free, Fly Williams. Um, can't remember some of the other ones, but those are the notables. We wound up playing together. I think we beat everybody that we played against, man, by at least 40. So it wasn't, Dang. you know, I mean, we, 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 you know, if we slowed it down, we made it a game. But the thing that was ironic for me is that oh, oh, we won a championship that year, and when they called out, you know, guys to get their trophies, okay, everybody got their trophies, and then you know how they do things. They call out everybody out, everybody, all the kids come and get the trophies, and now they're going to announce the MVP. So now they announced the MVP, 
and they call my name. Man, the goal. We call them goals back then and at that time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, goals. The goal that they gave me was the biggest trophy I've ever gotten in my life. The thing was like, it was almost as tall as I was. Like, it was like four and a half feet. So wow. here, here, here I go. I got this trophy. You know, you know, Whirl and, and Larry Fogel and Fly, all of them, they weren't too happy about this kid from the Bronx coming there and stealing their thunder, man. But, you know, I, I, <laughs> what can I say, man? You know, they were the best. And I, I was just an up-and-comer, man. I, I, I don't know what, what happened, man. God was on my side. That's I go right. home. I'm 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 going home on the train. I got a I got two trophies. One is is three foot. The other one is damn near five foot. And everybody on the train is at looking at me, asking me, "Where did you get this trophy from, man?" And so I had a story to tell, and I told oh, it all. Oh man, that's <laughs> right, brother. Yeah, yeah. Salute to you. Salute to you. That was the time that I really felt that I had come of age and that I was good enough. And, and, and that was going to be my next question. Who yeah. asked did you want to let you know you were good enough? But that MVP says it all. Yeah, yeah. It was, man, I wish I still had it. <laughs> I'd be polishing it now. But, <laughs> but, but it was, yeah, it was an incredible experience, no doubt about it. I, I, you know, I, kudos to Brooklyn and and all that they represent in terms of basketball, because you know the players that that I played against uh, during my my up and coming years, man, they made me the player that I that I was, no doubt. Wow. I have a question. Uh, my cousin Zachary Hussa is from the Bronx, and he went to Columbia University. He played basketball and football there. Do okay. you know him? No, I don't. Okay, I wonder, I wonder if you... Okay, cool, cool. I would like to let me, mention... Let me, let me put it this way. I may know him, but by, but by the name, I don't. Okay, the okay. Is, gotcha. Remember, I'm, gotcha. I'm a full head. <laughs> so, who, who was your toughest competition in New York City before you made your Trip out to Southern Idaho. Oh wow! Um, no, I, everybody from Brooklyn, man. All those players that I represent. Got you. Got you. Because you know the Bronx, we had great players, but at that point in time, you know, I that's why I felt that I had to go elsewhere because I was tearing it up in my in in my in in the South Bronx. Okay, I had made my name. I go to Manhattan, I made my name, but Brooklyn was the challenge. And when I, when, when I got the opportunity to play with my, uh, the coach, the rapper, and he asked me to play and come play to Brooklyn, man, I didn't hesitate, man, where I think a lot of guys would have had a little bit of fear in going out there to play. Hold on. My guy, uh, Lawrence Bud Pollard, the head coach of Jefferson, is on the line. Yo, Bud, did you hear that? We always talk about this. Every time me and him conversate, we always talk about the fact that the guys from other boroughs didn't come to Brooklyn. And we have an OG on live right now confirming that he had to come from the Bronx down to Brooklyn to get his game right. And no doubt. No doubt. I mean, and I loved every minute of it. All of those guys, all that are alive, you know, today, uh, although I may not, well, the only one I speak to pretty pretty often is Pete Davis, because I'm out on the West Coast. He's out, he's out on the West Coast, and, okay. and his brother Mike Davis is, is, is a very good friend of mine also. But all those players, my, Pete Davis, uh, Phil Sellers, um, uh, Fly Williams, uh, uh, Lloyd B. I mean, all those, those were my, those are the guys that took me to another level. They absolutely mm. great, great players. Wow. So how did you get to Southern Idaho? I want to know that. We're going to never get to that, that, that answer. Right? We need yeah. to know that. Absolutely. Get for the Bronx. Idaho. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, well, what happened was one of my one of my great mentors is Tiny Archibald. Uh huh. And and at the time, I believe, I believe Tiny was was in the lead. And and um, uh, at the time, uh, what happened was he, his agent had a connection. And ironically, what happened was. Uh, I wound up going to instead of going to Idaho first, I went to another junior college in in uh, in Missouri. Long story short, uh, had some academic issues there. They caught him, couldn't stay, um, had to leave. Cried like a baby, came back. They found another spot for me, which was College of Southern Idaho. So here's a case where. You know, just by the grace of God, man, in a matter of circumstances, I wind up going from a junior college that was not highly ranked or notable to perhaps the number one junior college in the nation. Wow. Yeah. Uh, a guy by the name of Victor Kelly, who was is a, is a, is a South Bronx guy, the 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 the, the Muggsy Bogues of his time, five mm -hmm. six, five five six Mighty Mike. He was a star player there. Uh, he also was a was mentored by by Tiny Archibald, and he was at the junior college before me. Previous to that, a gentleman by the name of Ron Behagen, who mm -hmm. was a a, a uh, uh, six nine power forward man from Dewitt Clinton. He was at the at the junior college. Uh, uh, before I was, so he, Ron was, I believe, two years ahead of me, so I missed him, but Victor Kelly and I wound up staying, uh, wound up playing together. But that's basically what happened. Uh, I, I got the hookup, man, from Tiny Archibald's agent and uh, wound up there, and, and, and as they say, you know, I, I was very, very fortunate because you have to be in this game, you know, because there's, yeah. there's so, many, so many great players. My coach was a great coach. And and he allowed me to do my thing, uh, unlike what my high school coach, my high school experience was. So um, my my junior college coach was was phenomenal, just a phenomenal man and a phenomenal coach. Wow! I wound, up, wound up making all American there, and and then going on. Look at that, my guy, uh, Sean Hawthorne. He said he went to Southern Idaho as well. Said when I oh when I was in Idaho, the coach name was Coach Trinkle. Trinkle, okay, I heard him. Yeah, yes, yeah. I heard about Trinkle. Yeah, Trinkle. Yeah. yeah, Trinkle came. I think he was he was uh, two coaches removed from my coach because my my coach was a, was a guy by the name of Jerry Hale. And he wound up coaching uh, a, a guy by the name of Arnold Duggle, who who came to uh, came to College of Southern Idaho right after me, and he was the next in line. And then they uh, he and then my 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 coach wound up going to Oral Roberts University because he was from from Oklahoma area. Mm. He wound up going there, and then he took Arnold Duggle along with him, and uh, you know. Kind of interesting story, just real quick. You know, my junior college coach, man, was an incredible coach, great man. Uh, you know, pure as the driven snow, wouldn't cheat. A, you know, wouldn't cheat anybody. You know, ironically, uh, you know, all Roberts, they wanted him to cheat, man, to win, and he decided he wasn't going to cheat. So, what happened was he wound up quitting, and he stopped coaching basketball and went in the oil business. Yeah. Wow. I heard, I heard uh, Nate Smith, the, the guy who they say invented basketball, he yeah. quit Kansas University because he didn't like how they was competing, putting, uh, I forgot the main reason, but I think it was the competition level and what they were doing at Kansas that he didn't like, so he left the university. Yeah, I, I well, that's, that's so much before my time, and 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 I don't know that history, so I can't I can't comment either way. 
But thank God he, he invented the game because, you know, he invented the game because he uh, you know, he obviously gave a lot of our kids, man, opportunities, man, to do something very special, man, and be part of a, of a history, right. a history, a great history of, of, of basketball. It is the greatest sport. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So when you became All-American yes. at the College of Southern Idaho, what schools besides UNLV were recruiting you now? Well, um, let's see. Probably, well, it, it, okay. The schools that were, were recruiting me, I, I probably got about 250 uh, uh, you know, offers, okay? Yeah, probably got about 250 offers, okay? Hmm. Um, you know, I, 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 and... Um, Where did you only, visit? Pardon me? Where did you visit? Oh, that's what I was getting ready to say. Two fifty. You got five visits. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I definitely went to Hawaii. <laughs> yo, hold on, talk about, talk about, yo. Look, listen, me and my guy, John, Coach John Arnold, right? <laughs> we always say this, kids. If you're good, take the trip to Hawaii, even if you don't go there. Take the trip. <laughs> Smart man. You're the second person that said they did that. Yeah, well, well, you know, I had good reason because one of my guys was there. Guy, you know, Tom Henderson, who who was also who also went to Clinton and he played. And Ooh. I did, as you know, Tom was there, and at that time, uh, I would have been a junior and Tom was a senior. And I believe Tom had just come off making the Olympic team. And at that time, he was what they called, uh, in terms of the uh, uh, the publicity and the pr promotion machine that was going, he was the Rolls Royce of college guards. <laughs> so, so at least I said, well, I used to tease him all the time. I said, well, Lisa, if you're the Rolls Royce, man, I got to be a Mercedes, okay? So <laughs> I, may, I, may come, I may come and join you, but I went out there to visit, hung out with him. My thinking was there that, yeah, it would have been good for me to, to play there, but, you know, I wanted the opportunity to make my own mark. That has always been something that I don't know where it came from, but it lied within and it just came out naturally. So I said, no, I'm not going to go to Hawaii. It's too beautiful out here. And Tom is going to get all the shine. I may get a little bit of that, okay? And, you know, all the scouts, you know, I said, well, I can look at this realistically. All the scouts are going to be looking at him. And if they're looking at him, they got to look at me. And so... You know, that could have been a good situation, but I said, mm, I want to go make my mark, man, make my own history. So I chose not to go to Hawaii. I was thinking about coming back home to to uh, to St. John's, but, you know, it just you know, just wasn't the right fit for me. Right, right. I didn't, Smart move. I, didn't, I didn't like the players. I didn't like the teams. I won't call out any names, okay? I just said, no, this ain't, this ain't me. Right. Then I looked at uh, University of San Francisco, which really was my number one choice. Very good program, too. Yeah, and at that time, they had a great player there by the name of Phil Smith. Mm. And Phil, 6'4", slender guard, terrific player, and wound up getting drafted high by Golden State, man, and what you know, and and really he was he was a homegrown boy. Uh, he was from San Francisco. Wound up going to the University of San Francisco, and then got drafted by by uh, um, Golden State. But anyhow, they had they had a lock on the conference. UNLV UNLV was just getting the program going because Tark the Shark had left Long Beach State to yep. go to UNLV. So ironically, I was being recruited by Long Beach State, let us stop coming from Long Beach State, started coming from UNLV, and I started, 
you know, having some some interest in 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 Vegas, and especially it became really hot and heavy when they threw out Diana Ross. I met Diana Ross. Then I met Sammy Davis Jr. Then I met Bill Cosby. They start throwing out all the stars to me. They said, Yo, what you going to do? You know, we going to do things here. And we, uh, uh, you know, and the coach thinks that, you know, that this is the spot for you. Man, after that, man, I said, Where'd I sign off at, man? You know, <laughs> this is a no, this is a no brainer. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Then you so, had the weather, yeah. So yeah, yeah right. And, and you went there, you made history, brother. So listen, here's a quote, right? Yes. Sobers played two years for us. The first year he was a pain in the ass. The second year he was sensational. Who said that? Well, that that that's attributed to to Doctor Shark. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Doctor Shark. But you know, but you know, he, I don't know when he said that, man. Somebody, yeah, you know, he must have been drinking at that time. <laughs> <laughs> they, they had that. That was a. a an uh, article I found was, uh, some years ago. Um, yeah. I guess when it was uh, having tribute uh, for you at UNLV. Sure. Sure, right. sure. But, sure. but, but for, for what you did, man, 855 points and 54 games, it's two years of putting in work, man. 20 yeah. and 6 the first year, 24 and 5 the second year with an NCAA birth. You become the school's first All-American and you become their first first round draft pick. That's great. Let's make some noise for that. For sure, we definitely gonna make some noise for that. Well, let me can, can I elaborate on, on on that on that story a little bit? Let, let me let me tell you this. My 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 junior year, I come you know coming to Vegas as a junior college all American, right? Well, uh -huh. we wound up. We went, we had two incumbent All Americans. Talk recruited two junior college All All Americans, one being me. Then we had, I believe, four or five high school All Americans that's coming. We had a team full of All Americans. So what essentially happened, our junior year or my junior year, everybody wanted the ball. Okay, there was not enough. Basketballs for this team. Got you, Everybody got you, knows. got you. Talk to him. He doesn't know what to do. He thinks, you know, he's got pressure on him. He just left Long Beach, which was, a, you know, the sweetheart deal. And now he got, he thinks he's got a whole bunch of knuckleheads. Okay. That's so, right. So, ironically, I guess the reason why that story was kind of put out there a little bit is because. He had this reputation of being uh, the father Flanagan of basketball. You take, I take wayward kids and I turn them, you know, I spin them into gold. Okay. Now, there may be a, 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 a lot of truth to that. We'll give them credit for that. In my case, there, you know, I wasn't the headache that he thought I was, that was his imagination. <laughs> but those those around me, those around me made things more difficult. Okay, and at the time he wouldn't allow, uh, he wouldn't allow me to be the leader that I was. But coming into my junior or my, my senior year, what basically happened was this: I went home with a high desire to be a pro. Okay? Mm. I did not want to fail. I wanted a better life for me and my family. So I went back and got with my coach, Mr. Page. And this is a true story. Mr. Page looked at me. I said, Mr. Page, what do I have to do to get to the next level? He looked at me, dead in my eyes. He says, you got to get in shape, son. You're fat. You're out of shape. Your ball handling is lousy. You, you know, you've got a lot of work ahead of you. 
I mm. said, man, my heart sunk, but I knew he was telling me the truth and he wasn't going to lie to me, man, because he right. was like a second father. Okay? He took me under his wing. I worked day and night every day during that summer until it was time to go to school. When he got through with me, I had lost like 35 pounds. I was like Adonis. My skill level, he had me out on the Grand Concourse doing ball handling drills. I'm dodging head-on traffic, wrapping the ball around my, around my back, through my legs. I'm, dra I'm, I'm dodging oh. cab driving. Uh, so that's what happened. I got my game together, came back that year, and basically told Tuck, I said, look, if you want to win like you told me you wanted to win when you first recruited me, then here's what I want. <laughs> here's what I want, okay? I want to be the captain of this team, okay? I want to be the All-American candidate. And if you do those two things for me, I do the rest. And that's just what went down. A man of your word. Definitely. Yeah. You yeah. definitely changed that uh program around to make it to the the UNLV that we all love today. So thank yeah. you for that. What Appreciate was your it. what was your best game as a rebel? My best game as a rebel. I would probably say uh, against uh, a, a great player from Bridgeport, Connecticut, guy by the name of Frank Olenek. There was two of them. F playing against Frank Olenek, uh, who was a a a a, uh, a white white boy from from Bridgeport, Connecticut, okay, and tremendous player was an All American as a sophomore at the University of Seattle. Mm. Yeah, and you know, my my junior year, which was, I believe, his sophomore year, he toasted me. Okay, and I never forgot it. Okay, I said, man, and 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 ironically, we became fast friends. But but he wore me out, and I never forgot it. I was looking for revenge my senior year. Came back senior year, my my. Uh, uh, I guess the best skill that I had was I was a defensive player. So I put him on lockdown and was able, you know, and, and, and I could score also. So, you know, at that time I put him on lockdown, you know, he didn't do what he did to me, you know, my, my junior year. And, uh, you know, I, we, we, uh, we wound up, uh, we wound up competing against one another pretty hard and, and I got the better him. We beat him and wound up winning the conference that year and, and going on for the first time to uh, the NCAA tournament for UNLV. First time ever. Wow. Awesome. The other one was playing against a cat by the name of Ron Lee. Ron Lee uh, went to the University of Oregon. Phenomenal athlete, phenomenal player. And he uh, he and I went, and went at it at Oregon. Oregon is a very tough place to play. Great crowd. And a uh, uh, very, very good, very good team at that time. Yeah, phenomenal player. And, and, and we wound up, we wound up, he had something like 30. I had like, you know, 30, 35, something like that. We put on a show for, we put a show, put a show on for everybody. Uh, I think we wound up beating them. And uh, ironically enough, you know, we wound up becoming pros. Wow. So. Do all you need to do at UNLV become a, a legend, household name in Las Vegas. How did it feel to get drafted, right, after putting in all that hard work? And where were you when you heard the news? Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Um, I think I was – let's see. That, the, the draft was in June – yeah, I had to be home, man. I had to be home. I was in New York. I was in New York, and uh, I can't remember exactly where I was at, but I was definitely in New York and wound up, uh, I guess, 
having a little party over uh, over my family's house. And how did and, you uh, find out? Did they call you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They wound up calling me. I'm sorry, I got the call, and uh, I believe it was the head coach. And you know they give you the you know regular spiel, okay? You know, Ricky, you know how does it feel to be drafted? You know, and, <laughs> you know we 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 are very excited to having you here, and we chose you over you know all the other you know great guards that were coming out this year because we felt that you were the best defensive guard in the nation. And so obviously I was I was impressed by that and. Uh, it was it was very interesting going to Phoenix uh, because you know Phoenix had no real history in the NBA at that time. Right. They they they, they you know they they didn't do well at all. Uh, coming into my rookie year, we were projected to place fifth in a division, which is last. And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, we wound up, uh, and, you know, long story short, we wound up going to the championship my rookie year. And, wow. uh, yeah, we had, we had an incredible, one of the great, great runs in the history of basketball. No doubt. Now, how was the transition from UNLV to playing in the NBA? It was, it was, uh, how would you say, I guess, from a playing standpoint, from my standpoint, it was cool. Everything was great. Um, I didn't mind not starting coming in because you know many players come in into the game nowadays. Uh, I, I, you know, even as as uh, as freshmen, you know, and 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 actually they would be sophomores and, and they wind up they wind up starting you know their first first year in the league. No, right. they kept me on the bench. Uh, I played about 18 minutes a game, first half of the season, and what happened was we had a, we had a horrible, horrible f of, of first half of the season. I think we were 13 and 23. Um, you know, team was you know just kind of you know put together. You know, my 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 backup mate who just passed recently, Paul Westfall, uh, yeah. was just traded. R.I.P. Yes. Yeah, he was just traded uh, for Charlie Scott. They sent Charlie to Boston, and then we got Paul Westfall. And so Paul, well, this was the first time he had an opportunity to start. And so, um, but they, they wouldn't start me because the coach just didn't have faith in rookies at that time. They just, you know, that was from an era where they wanted to have veteran players playing. So I didn't start. What happened was uh, about halfway through the season, uh, the guy that was starting ahead of me was was an older player, 12-year pro by the name of Dick Van Arsdale, former mm -hmm. name. He wound up breaking his arm. So they were forced to start me. So when they just so when they when they was forced to start me, here we go. You know, they, they slid Paul over to the off guard, which was probably his best position at that time, and they put the ball in my hands. And and but the biggest thing was that I brought to them was I brought them a toughness and mm. a defensive prowess, man, defensive skill that they didn't have in a, in a level of speed and tenacity that the previous player, man, the player that broke his arm, could not provide. So we went from one of the slowest backcourts to a competitive backcourt with regard to speed and, and all the other skills that you need. So uh, as a result, uh, we wound up, uh, having a successful second half of the season, we wound up going two games over uh, 500. I think we were 42 and 40. Uh, wound up playing Seattle in in the first round of uh, of the playoff. Beat them 42. Came up uh, the next round. We played Golden State Warriors, who were the reigning champions and was expected to win it all again, we beat them in seven games at their house on the seventh game and and broke a lot of hearts. Yes. But matter of fact, matter of fact, that the that series set them back forty plus years. They yeah. didn't 
They did not That's get right. to a playoff or championship until Stephen uh, Stephen Curry and and, and the, the recent players that made them so good came on. They they dropped you know they stopped a forty year. We started a forty year drought for them and they stopped it. Woo! Then we wound up. Then we wound up uh, playing against the mighty Boston Celtics, who no. Uh, and we go hold on, hold on. We we gonna get there. Okay. Because my guy okay. James Majors said game six of that final was the greatest game ever played. He just That's didn't it. like the outcome. Game five. It was game five. Oh, game five. Okay. Game okay. Five. So now we'll let everybody know. Game five, nineteen seventy five. Correct. 75-76 series, yes. Yep. Actually, yep. Your team is facing the Boston Celtics in the NBA Finals. Correct. And you dropped 20, what, 26 and 6? Yeah, it was like 25, 25 and 6. 25 and 6. 25 and 6, yes. I, I, I and what, Paul. What, what, what happened? What The lights turned on. You took it back to New York City. Man. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Well, it, it was it was a great series, no doubt. And I was playing against many of my heroes. Charlie Scott was on the other on, on the other side. We I need had Charlie a, Scott, another New York City great. Yes, got to get them all. No doubt. And uh, had to, you know, he and I was going at it. And uh, but I had to guard JoJo. Yeah, I, I had JoJo White tough. <laughs> I had the task of guarding JoJo, which which was a nightmare, which was really a nightmare. JoJo White was perhaps the best guard that I, I may have played against ever. Phenomenal player. And, you know, so so you, you ask what happened? I don't know what happened, man. God took me, man, and, and, and scooped me up in his in his hands and said, look, son, you're going to play your game, one of your, one of your better games tonight. And um, I wanted to win, man. I wanted to bring this this championship back to Phoenix. I wanted to represent New York, my family, and 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 all the ballers, man, that were underdogs in life. And and that's how I took it. So uh, I had no fear going into that game. I don't know how many thousands of people that were screaming bloody murder. He was on your side cheering. Yes. We wanted yeah, to win yeah. so bad. Definitely. Oh, listen, playing in Boston Garden was no picnic, man. They were they were throwing, I mean, it was like I, I can't even explain. It was like going through hell, man. They throw they was throwing coins at you. Guys pennies, were spitting. Pennies. Cause they did that at Maris with us. Yeah. They did throw pennies. And Maris College had like the parquet floor, like the Boston Garden. And they oh, could throw pins at us. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, the you know, Boston Boston Garden, the Boston fans, man, were loyal fans to the, to the death. And anybody that came in there, man, was the pure enemies. But after we got through with them and gave them the scare of their life, they you know, we really should have won. We got respect from them to this day. Forty years later. They're still showing that game on NBA TV, which is incredible to me. I, I, I posted. I posted you getting busy today, so <laughs> definitely. I posted. I posted like, yeah, yeah, definitely. Appreciate that, my brother. You're welcome. My God, just hit me up and say you get Charlie Scott. Oh, that's awesome. Look at that. See, New York City working together, man. This is what we got to keep doing. Absolutely, man. Charlie is a, my, my guy. Just heard me say that and just hit me on the text. Yeah, Charlie, yeah, man. Charlie, Charlie, Charlie's Charlie's got a story. What what what? One of the things you got to do is get get Charlie and have him tell you the story about Lomberg Institute. Listen, I know about Lomberg. Let me tell you something. I don't know what he experienced there, but I know Gil Reynolds. Uh, took a lot of guys down there from New York City to try to help them turn their lives around. And right. yes, definitely. So that's that. I would love to hear that story. And and the long birth story need to be told. It is. Yeah, it definitely does. Definitely does. It, it's a, it's a tremendous story. 
I was just on uh, on on because uh, I do kind of a similar thing that that you're doing. Although you're you're way ahead of me, man, on 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 multiple levels, man. So I have to tip my hat to you. But in my thank own you, my, my own quaint way, uh, I had an opportunity to talk to a guy, gentleman that I never knew before, that was part of the crew that went down to Lomberg Institute along with Charlie Scott and the GOAT, Earl Manny GOAT, gentleman by the name of Sonny Johnson. Sonny wow. told me, you got to get Sonny Johnson on your show. Sonny, yes, I want to make this happen right. Well, let me put this in my notes. Yeah. Definitely. Listen, if you can get, if you can get Sonny and and Charlie on the same show, I'm gonna tell you right now, man. You know that 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 would be like Brian Gumble, you know, bringing you know Will Chamberlain and 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 uh, and and Kareem Abdul Jabbar in the same room. Okay, I would probably have to do that on a Zoom call. I wouldn't mind doing that at all. That would yeah. be awesome. Well, yeah. I, I'd love to bring you on and 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 introduce you to to my crew. And, oh, and listen, anytime, man, anytime, just call me. Uh, if as long as it's not Sunday, Monday, and Wednesday, while I do my show, I'm available. <laughs> All right, <laughs> we'll figure it out. <laughs> all right, all right. I got a few more questions, but I'm gonna let you go. Sure. All right, sure. a few more questions, but I'm gonna let you go. Okay. Sure. Now. I must have made a mistake because there was a picture that I seen of you playing against Larry Bird. Yes, yes. Okay, uh, okay. Here, here's what we got a little confused at, I guess. Okay, uh, when the the seventy six series. Okay. I know about that because he wasn't still he wasn't in, 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 in the exactly. pros. Yes, exactly. Yes. exactly. And that's why I got and that's why I got confused. Okay, like of course, exactly. the time. Yes, in the exactly. intro. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. No problem. Yeah. No worries. Uh, but what what happened was what what yes, we wound up playing against each other a couple of times. I wound up getting uh, let's see. Oh, uh, there were two times we wound up playing against them, and we got dusted by them because they had the front line and Bird, what have you. So, yeah. But we we did the best we could and stuff. But one one year um, uh, with the with the Bullets, I was with the with the Washington Bullets, now Wizards. Yes. And we had a we had a pretty good de team, but our bench was a little suspect. Like I said, they were loaded. They had Bird. They had uh, let's see. At that time, I think they they might have even had DJ there, uh, Cornwell, Maxwell, um, uh, the Chief, Parrish, and and McHale and those guys. Their front line man was devastating. All right, but besides that, seeing planting his Bird and seeing it up front, was it the real deal? Oh, he can play, man. He can he can flat out play. You know, I mean, you can make it. You know, that's why I tell when I when I teach kids all the time, and they worry about, oh, I can't dunk. I said Larry Bird couldn't dunk. I said, well, <laughs> I got no speed. I got no speed. I said Larry Bird was slow as molasses. But you know, but I I can't do this. Listen, if you got the skills, okay. And you understand, and you have the skills, and you have the intellect. Okay, then you can play this game at a high level, and that's what he did. Cerebrally, he mm. was way ahead of the game. Then, then, Birdie had a he had a devastating. He had a weapon that a lot of play, players didn't have. He was a dead eye shooter. Dead eye shooter. Yeah, man, dead eye. From back here, like the oh, form yeah. was just. It was just this arm was out of here crazy, but this, yeah. this one was straight. Oh Danny. yeah, Danny. Danny yeah. was trick. Danny he had some tricks, man, because he had been playing against the brothers, man. He you know he had been going up to Indianapolis and wherever he can go. I mean, like you know he 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 pulled the Ricky Sobers, man. He went to Brooklyn, you know. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's <laughs> right. And, and, and he did give the brothers the props. He said he would go and play against the brothers. So when a white guy would guard him, he felt it was disrespect. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no doubt, no doubt. No, the bird, the bird man, man, had plenty of game, and he was fun to he was fun to play against because he talked a lot of stuff too, right? And, he, and yeah, people don't realize that bird talks smack, big smack. Oh, listen, we we had so much fun going back and forth, man. He said, he said, Ricky, he said, what are you doing? What you doing to DJ, man? You know, now you cause now you cause KC Jones, man, to make a lineup change, and now I gotta guard you. I said, "Oh well, you got a problem, son." <laughs> I said, "I said, Bertie, man, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but you're too slow, too slow for this New York go go." That's right. <laughs> All right, uh, 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 kind of a personal but fun question for us here. Okay, since my guy James Majors is here, we always talk about what guys used to get for road trips for mill money. He was saying in 1983, he was getting $5 a day for trip money when he played at Seton Hall. Right? <laughs> you laughed at that. <laughs> and you went to school before that, and you laughing at that. That's crazy. <laughs> How much did you guys get back then? In, in, in college or pros? <laughs> We gonna we gonna talk we gonna talk college first. Well, college man, they you know they never put any money in your hands. <laughs> I got you, I got you. Okay, per diem, per diem for pros. When you play compared to what they get now, I have no idea. But I, this, this is because I'm I'm, I'm I'm asking a question now. Yeah. Because outside of you guys' salary, they give you guys a per diem, correct? Yes, yes, yes. It was. It was. Which I don't uh, think people realize. People just think they give you a salary and y'all just spending your money. You y'all do that anyway. But when y'all going on these road trips or games, you get a per diem. Right. Well, they, I I can't remember exactly how much it was, but. I'll, I'll equate it like this. We used to use that as CD money, okay? Whenever we got our per diem, we just go out and buy a bunch of CDs, man, and just, you know, <laughs> get your music thing on. You know? I hear that. Okay, okay, cool. Cool. All right. Top five basketball players in New York City. Top History. five. Ooh, top five. Okay. I'm going to roll with this, okay? Number one, man, you got to take the big fella. Yes. Okay? Got to take the big fella. You know, Lou Alexander. That's, that's right, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. For those okay. people out there who don't know who the big fella is. Yeah. You got to take him, man. He's, he's, the, he's the greatest of all time, no no doubt. You know? Yeah, no yeah. Good. It starts with him. No, no disrespect to, to Jordan at all, Okay. But the big fella was he he was the one. All right. So I gotta take him. I gotta take Connie Hawkins. Okay. I got I got I got, I got two, both of them on my list. So you doing good, OG. Yeah, I gotta I gotta take Connie. Okay. I'ma throw Connie. I'ma throw Connie at power forward. Okay? That's what I did. Okay. Man. I'm gonna throw on. Connie. Real man. Real man. Okay. Then you got to put the doctor in there. Okay, the doctor is the small forward. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Got to put him in this spot, right? Now it gets hard, okay? Because now you got to, you know, now you got to bring some, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm picking it as a team, okay? Like if I want to field a, 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 the, the all-time New York City team. Okay? Yeah. All right. Then I'm going to take, I'm going to take, Probably Charlie Scott as as my as my big guard. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna take Charlie Scott as my big guard, and then I'm gonna take the one and only Nate the Skate man. I'm gonna take Nate the Skate as my as my point guard man. Now I got I got Nate. Okay. And my two guard. I, I switch it up between Rolando Blackman and Chris Mullen. Okay. 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 And. Uh, 
The small forward, I have Bernard King. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, also have Connie Hawkins at the four and Kareem yeah. at the five. Okay, so you took the same the same route as I did. You, I, you, you I place win. Yeah, we yeah. Don't you need, play, we don't need Jerry Tarkanian's team for the first year that you were there. Okay, well, see, the question was, if I recall the question, the question was, name your top five, top five New York City players. Okay, but since we we're, we're team players and we think a team and we want to play and we want we want to we want to fall and a half foot trophy, right? That's so, right. So, so we we pick we're, we're picking a team. We're not just <laughs> five top players. We're picking. We're picking the top right. players position wise. That's right. That's what the smart ones do. Well, you know, knock on wood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Okay. Top high school player you played against. The top college guy you played against and the top pro. Top high school player? Wow. Okay, now you know, take into consideration, never played high school, so I didn't play and you know, against guys. Yeah, that's on, on that's cool. School. You you based them in summer tournaments, whatever. I'm a, I'm, you know what? I, I'm gonna have to say World Be Free. Okay. Lloyd Lloyd Free. I think he 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 was probably the, the best that I played against at that time. No doubt. Um College wise, wow. I would have to say Phil Smith from University of San Francisco. Great player, phenomenal, you know, just a phenomenal all around player. I, I like all around players. I'm I'm a yeah, I'm yeah. a proponent of of Clyde uh Clyde Walt Clyde Frazier, uh, all around guards. Um Let's see. Uh, and then pro? Wow. Very interesting. Um, the guy, you know, I, I'm going to go back to the guy that gave me the hardest time. Okay? The guy that gave me the hardest time as a pro was World Be Free. Okay? Again. Yeah, yeah. Again. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, he was a phenomenal scorer. When he left Philadelphia and went on to the other teams, you know, he didn't slip at all, man. He led the led the league in scoring several times. And and I and I say I say him and, and players like him because I was a physical player. If you wasn't a physical player, and and, and all due respect to Rolando Blackman, but you know, uh didn't have a problem with him. Okay. Um, but when I played against World Be Free, oh yeah. That uh, you know, that was a the night before was a sleepless night. Okay, wow, and it was a sleepless night, absolutely. Because you know, I mean, here's, here's a guy that you know I basically grew up with. That's right. And and he had no he had no fear of me, and and ultimately, I didn't have fear of him, but. I knew that he was going to shoot a whole lot more than I was, okay? So I knew that was a problem. So even if he, even if he goes 10 for 30, oh, shoot, that's 20 right there. That's you know? right. That's right. If I foul him a few, you know, a, you know, four or five times, you know, he, he, you know he's going to make his free throws. I mean, he got 25 right there. Man, if I, if I get 14 shots, I'd be lucky. That's just how it was. My guy, my guy uh, said, Rolando, I don't know about that. He said, Rolando was tough. Well, get, get Rolando on the call next time. I'll be happy to come back on the show. <laughs> Yo, I had him on the show. Rolando's been on the show already, so definitely. And, and, I, and I love him. I love him. But I hated when he used to say, damn, Ricky. What are you doing? <laughs> Too tough? Too tough? 
Yeah, man. Unfortunately, the South Bronx came out of me, man. And I say, listen, man, you know, don't cry on my shoulder, man, because you get no <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But a great player. A great player yeah. who I have a yeah. lot of respect for. No doubt. So, so how do you stay in shape these days, Rick? Well, I, I, you know, you got to take your health seriously. You know, <laughs> you, you absolutely do. I mean, there's, there's, there's so many things out there, man, that have always been out there. And if you can, you know, and, and if you do those things, man, you, you know, not going to be there. But, you know, the things that I do, uh, basically, I, I, I eat well, okay? I eat healthy. I, I do moderate exercise. And, um, and, and uh, you know, it's just, you know, just those things right there. I mean, and, you know, you just, you got to have a certain mindset. You got to have, you know, a certain discipline. Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm about to embark on a major uh, um, training program. So I, I do yoga, a lot of stretching, a lot of flexibility training, um, some weight training, but more resistant, resistance bands than, than weights, uh, cardio. You know, you got to mix things up. So, what what will happen is when 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 I, I get it all together, like I said, I'll be available to you to get back on and and we'll talk a little bit more about it. Oh, please, please, yeah. please! I would love that and share that with the audience. Yeah, because I I, I I would like to. Uh, I would like to. I would like to do that, man. Definitely, definitely. I'll have some surprises for you. Okay, I appreciate that. Whenever you're ready, just let me know. Uh, I'll do it. Bob Pollard want to know. Uh, he said, "Ask him about Armand Hill." Armand is is one of my heroes, man. Another another Brooklyn born star. Okay, uh, Armand, I love Armand Hill. Armand is 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 a is a is a great player coming out of Brooklyn. Um, when when he and I. Both became pros because we're contemporaries. He was playing in Atlanta. I believe I was in Phoenix. Armand had the killer crossover. Okay. This is before Pearl. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But it was different. It was different. Okay. Okay. It, it was different. Armand's deal was he took the ball, right hand, left hand, real low. And brought it back to your right hand, so it was like whoop whoop, right? So he'd make you think because he was a right-handed player. He'd make you think that he was dashing left, but he would he would he would dribble it back with his left hand, left hand to right hand and be gone. And he had it. He had the step down so so well that his body was by you, and you either had to foul him, and and he was just gone. So. I used to beg Armand. I said, Armand, I said, listen, I'm your boy, right? He says, yeah, Ricky, you're my boy, man. You know, even though you're from the Bronx, you're my boy. I said, yeah, man. I said, you're killing me with this crossover dribble, man. And I'm, yeah. I, I'm liking it. Okay? I'm not liking it. And, and I'm, I'm wondering, would you be kind enough to teach me that move? Man, you know, nobody teach you their pet move. Right, right. You just gotta watch him, okay? You gotta watch him, and you gotta steal it. Armand took me on the court. Said, "Yo, Ricky, this is how I do it." And ever since then, man, I mean, I still got the killer crossover, man. Shoot, it's salute it's Armand Hill. Thanks a lot, bud. That's another one. Yeah, Armand, Armand, terrific. Terrific player, man. Uh, yeah, I forgot to mention him, but yes, Armand was in that group, man, of Brooklyn-born players, man, that were outrageously good. So mm. good. Mm. Raised, raised my level. Took me to a whole nother level. Wow. Well, hopefully we can take things to another level right now when I'm about to show you. So let's uh let's do that right now.
Who's that guy right there? <laughs> Who's that guy right there? Nice. Nice. Who's the, who the little guy? Is that talk? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Nice. Very. I, I, I give them thumbs up, man. Two thumbs up on that one there. I don't know who the artist is, man. But That's my guy, Jamel Powell, who I introduced you to at the beginning of the show. Oh. That's what he was doing. While we were talking, while I was talking to you, this is what he was doing. Is that what he was doing? Yeah. Oh, man. That's, that's awesome, man. That's that's incredible. He's a bad boy. And he's a ball player, too. And coach. Right? Yeah, coach. we both coach. So. Oh, that's, that's, that's beautiful, man. That's awesome. That's a very nice twist. I love that. Yes, yes. This is what we do for our guests here at Basketball Heads. We show you our love. Yeah. So we'll always be, you know, imprinted in your heart. And then also, you know, you got something to look at and think about New York City basketball. Yeah, yeah right. no doubt. No doubt, man. I love, I love my city, man. I love what you're doing, Glenn. This is an awesome show. And I, I really appreciate you inviting me to be part of, of your history. Thank you. Thank you. This is our history, right? Because we don't yeah. want anyone to ever forget about Ricky Sobers and all the great things that you did in New York City now that you're over on the West Coast. We didn't forget about you, Ricky. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. For yeah. sure. Thank you, OJ. Appreciate you. And yeah. call me when you're ready to come back, all right? I'll come back anytime, man. We're going to do this again. We're going to Oh, for listen, sure. For sure. Listen, for sure. Listen, listen I'm, I'm just getting warmed up, man. I ain't tell you really the hardcore stories. <laughs> Oh, uh, listen, we, listen, we got time for that, all right? Yeah, yeah. Make sure you send me your information uh, so I can see that picture in the next couple of weeks or whatever because I got a lot of more pictures to send out. But thank you. Fantastic. I will put that on my wall of fame, man. It will have a prominence. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that, yeah. man. All right. Right on. Right on. Wow. Another awesome interview with the great Ricky Sobers. Listen, let me tell y'all something. I remember watching this man when I was a little kid and remember hearing that announcer saying, from New York City, Ricky Sobers. And I was like, he from the city. We got a guy in the NBA, another one. You gotta rep our city, okay? Show love. Never forget the history. We have boys, high, great, St. Bonaventure legend, Elma Anderson, Wednesday, 8 o'clock. That's right. The Brooklyn Tech high school coach and New York City great, Pearl's backcourt partner. We are having Pearl's backcourt partner who stood on his own because he had that Jimmy and was nice. Elma Anderson, tune in because we are the official home for New York City basketball. Peace.